I've got to say, the past 24 hours have been absolutely wild. Since Joe Biden announced that he's dropping out of the race and endorsing Kamala Harris, the sense of relief among Democrats has been palpable. And it's not necessarily because Kamala Harris is the best candidate ever or guaranteed to beat Trump. No, this is still going to be a really close race. But the difference now is that Democrats actually have a chance. Trump no longer feels like an inevitability. The Democratic Party's base is no longer demoralized. In fact, they're more energized now than they've been in a really long time. And I say this because Harris managed to raise over $80 million in her first day as a candidate for presidency, with 60% of those contributors being first-time 2024 donors and 43,000 signing up for recurring donations. And it just goes to show you that when you listen to your base, they will reward you. Democrats have been begging for some somebody new, somebody younger, and they are now rewarding Democrats for giving them what they've been begging for. Now, we do have to wait one or two weeks to get a better sense as to where Kamala's at vis-a-vis -vis Trump. We have to see how the endorsements and speculation about her VP picks affects her. Also, she hasn't really even started campaigning yet. This is day one of her campaign. So we need to let her campaign and speak and let Americans get to know her better in order to gauge where she's really at. But one thing that almost immediately gave me a lot of hope was seeing the collective pan shitting from Republicans who realized that they now have to throw out the entire playbook and start from scratch. In fact, on Truth Social, Trump tweeted, so we are forced to spend time and money on fighting crooked Joe Biden. He pulls badly after having a terrible debate and quits the race. Now we have to start all over again. Shouldn't the Republican Party be reimbursed for fraud in that everybody around Joe, including his doctors and the fake news media, knew he was not capable of running for or being president? Just asking. Well, thanks for asking, but the answer is no. It doesn't work that way. And you're still at an advantage because Kamala has just over 100 days to put together an entire presidential campaign, whereas you've been running for president for the past two years. But that frustration right there is real because all of the attacks that they had planned against Joe Biden are now completely irrelevant. They have to throw them in the trash and they don't know where to even begin when it comes to Kamala Harris. So they've just been attacking Biden for the most part, at least a lot of them have saying, where's Joe Biden? He should step down and resign from the presidency since he's not running for a second term. And none of that matters because it doesn't affect Kamala Harris. But to the extent that they've started to attack Kamala, it is very clear they've got jack fucking shit for example listen to trump's nickname for her kamala i call her laughing kamala you ever watch her laugh she's crazy you know you can tell a lot by a laugh no she's crazy she's nuts she's not as crazy as nancy pelosi crazy nancy laughing Kamala, really? That's what we're going with this time? I mean, obviously, it just doesn't go as hard as Crooked Hillary or even Sleepy Joe Biden because you are literally portraying your opponent as a happy and joyful person, which is not a juxtaposition you want people to think about when you're a whiny, angry old man. So you're helping her if you're gonna call her laughing Kamala. But let me just show you some of these other attacks that they're lobbing at Kamala because they've got nothing. Libs of TikTok, for example, shared a compilation of Kamala Harris laughing, saying they want this woman to be president as if laughing, <laughs> as if laughing is somehow disqualifying for the presidency. Also, Sean Hannity did the same thing, as if videos of her laughing are like some sort of of a gotcha. I love that they're going with this. But believe it or not, their attack on her laughing actually might be their strongest attack thus far. Not because it's a good attack, it's dog shit, but because compared to their other attacks, this attack just makes them look joyless. Whereas the other attacks make them look like weird little freaks. So, you know, if you had to choose, I'm assuming you'd want to look joyless as opposed to looking like a weird little freak. For example, Will Chamberlain, a large right wing account on Twitter, argues, quote, really simple under discussed reasons and why Kamala Harris shouldn't be president. No children. Now you might be thinking, wait, she is a stepmom. She has children. But he adds, nope, becoming a step parent to older teenagers doesn't count. Oh, okay. Now, it's not just some random saying it. This is a longtime attack on Kamala Harris. Back in 2022, when J.D. Vance was running for the Senate, he also attacked Kamala for being a, quote, childless cat lady. And I really don't think that they understand that attacking a woman for being childless makes them look like deranged fucking freaks. But on the subject of J.D. Vance, he has another line of attack against Kamala, and uh, this one's pretty ironic. Um, the vice president, Kamala Harris, she doesn't like me. Ka Kamala Harris said something to the effect that, that I have no loyalty to this country. 
Well, I don't know, Kamala. I did serve in the United States Marine Corps and build a business. What the hell have you done other than collect the check? What has she done other than collect the check from her political offices? And we have to, we, we have to give her credit, my friends. She did serve as border czar during the biggest disaster open border that we've ever had in this country. Let's get President Trump back there, close down that border, and bring some common sense and security to this country. You can't attack somebody for doing nothing and collecting a check when you're bought and paid for by Peter Thiel and tech billionaires. But there was also a contradiction there, if you noticed it, because on one hand, he's saying she's done nothing, but she's also responsible for open border policies, which if anybody says that there's an open border, they're just saying that they're stupid and they're uninformed and don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But I mean, which is it, though? Is she doing nothing or is she facilitating open border policies? Because even if you disagree with her policies, you're still crediting her for doing something. And that right there, you know, could be used as an ad because he's saying, what has she even done? Then they can go through her list of accomplishments as senator, attorney general, whatever. But there's more. Conservative influencer James Lindsay thinks he's found evidence that she is a Satan worshiper <laughs> writing on Twitter. Let's talk about Kamala Harris saying to see what can be unburdened by what has been. This phrase, which she repeats all the time, is not mysterious. It's esoteric. That is, it's a cult. It's a Marxist and Luciferian incantation, and that's easily seen. Okay, keep running with that, bud. RNC Research shared a photo of her standing, quote, directly in front of one of the NCAA athletes being honored by the White House. I don't think she's ever going to recover from this one so you know this is a very good very good attack they're also circulating a video of her uh saying her pronouns and describing herself during a meeting with disability activists who were literally blind but i guess accommodating visually impaired people is a scandal if you have nothing and when all else fails you know there's just straight up sexism and this is one of many examples they're trying to find pictures of her with her mouth open to insinuate you know fellatio because woman therefore woman sex object and i think that they think that's a gotcha but it's just making them look craven and despicable oh and according to rnc research she's quote unoriginal annoying and highly incompetent listen if the people tasked with opposition research come back with, oh, she's annoying, especially when Donald Trump is their guy, that just goes to show you that they don't have shit. They are scrambling, and whatever they find that they think will hurt her will only help her. For example, they've also been sharing clips from her 2020 campaign where she talks about progressive policies that she supports, such as a single-payer healthcare system that ends private insurance. Now, unfortunately, Kamala ran away from Medicare for All in 2019 and made it clear that she wouldn't abolish private insurance, and I criticized her for it at the time. But if you make people think that she does support single-payer and getting rid of private insurance companies, I promise you, that is only going to make her more popular because we all hate our private health insurance company. We pay hundreds of dollars per month, if not thousands of dollars per month, and get shitty coverage. So if you make everyone think that she supports free health care for all of us, good on you because you are campaigning for her at that point. Now, also, the Trump War Room account tweeted out that the Kamala HQ account, quote, is living unburdened by what has been, which is a phrase turned meme of endearment, as one person points out, saying, drop the usage of that phrase now. They're going to spin that into marketing for her campaign. They've been creating TikTok videos of her saying that over Charlie XCX songs, and Gen Z loves it. In other words, their own supporters are like, holy shit, please shut the fuck up because you're going to make her more popular with young people. But let's hear from Kellyanne Conway because maybe she's got an attack that'll land. She had disastrous staff turnover as vice president. I check it on the daily. Her public schedule, gentlemen, rarely has anything on it or one or two things on it. She does not speak well. She does uh, not work hard. All right. So Kellyanne, let anyone, me ask you. And she should not be the standard bearer for the party. Kellyanne, you are part of the administration that had a record turnover, so you don't want voters to even think of the word turnover because they're obviously going to attribute high turnover to Donald Trump. His own VP didn't endorse him. There's a reason why he's running with a new running mate. So that's not something you want to bring up. Also, you can't say that she didn't do anything because Harris can easily rebut and say, well, Trump was effectively golfer in chief. That is, unless he was planning a coup, then he was really working.
But on the subject of a coup, those who haven't made the pivot to attacking Kamala are trying to, I guess, rally Biden diehards by calling his decision to step down a coup, which is very stupid. I mean, you have prominent right wing donors and propagandists all calling this a coup. And this is an attack on democracy, which is the height of irony, obviously, after these people literally tried to steal the last election. Now, the coup attack isn't going to land for a number of reasons. First, they're the worst messengers ever. So them saying it's a coup, not very persuasive. If there were some Biden supporters that said this was a, a coup, like maybe, but it seems like most Biden dead enders that were saying you shouldn't drop out have basically coalesced around Kamala. So you're farting in the wind at this point. Second of all, Biden literally endorsed the person who supposedly cooed him. And Democrats can easily spin this as talking about how it's not a coup. Biden actually just made a selfless decision for the greater good of the country and contrast that with Trump and how he's self-centered and would never even consider stepping down, even if it meant certain defeat for Republicans. So they're opening the doors to so many good responses and attacks from Democrats based on what they're saying about Kamala Harris right now, right? But them calling it a coup, that's cope, point blank. Now, they think that it's unfair that they have to run against Kamala instead of Joe Biden, which is why they're calling it a coup. And them saying it's a coup is just like them screaming and throwing a tantrum because they they thought this was going to be easier. They didn't want to have to run against somebody who's younger. And I say this because just listen to the sheer panic in Stephen Miller's voice when he shrieks about how unfair this is on Fox News. They held a primary. People, they had ballots. They filled out circles. They went to the voting booths. They spent money on advertisements. And as President Trump said, the, the, the Republican Party spent tens of millions of dollars running against Joe Biden. Now they just woke up one morning and said, never mind, we're canceling the entire primary. We're, we're getting rid of our candidate and we're pretending the election has never even happened. And we're going to let donors handpick a new nominee. They're publicly admitting that they are an oligarchy. They are not running a democracy. They are not running a representative republic. This is an oligarchy controlled by business interests. And the Democratic Convention is the private corporation that represents those business interests. This is as full frontal an attack on American democracy as we've ever seen in the history of America's major political parties. That clip is genuinely amazing. And I think that it's emblematic of how the rest of them are currently feeling. They are scared shitless you know they were overly confident with joe biden and fought to keep him at the top of the ticket but now things have changed and you know it's bad when trump is all of a sudden getting cold feet about debating kamala so yesterday trump started floating the idea of maybe changing the terms of the debate asking it to be hosted by fox news instead of abc news since george quote slopadopoulos it's snuffleupagus by the way will be unfair to him now newswire says that a gop source told politico that they think trump is going to try to back out of the september debate with kamala and he's going to use the excuse that she is an illegitimate candidate since this was a quote unquote coup so that just goes to show you how a afraid he is. And look, I don't blame him. After seeing how badly that one debate went for Joe Biden, Trump now knows that he's one bad debate night away from losing it all. And if he's in the lead currently, then why risk it by having a bad debate night? And either way, this is a win-win for Kamala, because if he doesn't debate her, then she can attack him for being scared. But if she does debate him. I think she has the chance to crush him if she plays her cards right. So, I mean, at this point, it's clear that they're just flailing because they've got nothing on her. And for the first time ever, which is actually shocking, they don't know how to attack a Democrat because I don't think that they expected Joe Biden to drop out. And, you know, that's surprising to me. I guess I didn't really expect it either, but you would have expected them to have at least some sort of a contingency plan ready to go if Biden dropped out. But they clearly didn't like they, they anticipated running against Joe Biden. They were really confident that he was going to be the guy. And now that he's not, you can tell just how caught off guard they all are. And after they spent the last couple of years trying to make this election a referendum on Biden because of his age and mental acuity, that line of attack has officially come back to bite them in the asses, which was never a good idea since Trump is super old himself. But just watch how Democrats are now talking about age. Right now, Kamala Harris has a work cut out for her. She's running against the oldest 
uh, nominee for president of the United States in American history. And so when you have this type of change election, when you have this type of generational divide that you have, it's a question of whether or not you want to go backwards with Donald Trump or forward with Kamala Harris. I mean, the man is nearly 80 years old. And so the question is, can he serve another four years? I'm not sure he can. Now, that's obviously a hypocritical point for Bakari Sellers of all people to make since he defended Joe Biden and didn't want him to drop out. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because what he's saying is still objectively true, hypocrisy aside. And these past couple of months has made it very clear that age is a major concern to a lot of voters. So playing up Trump's age is one of many things that I think Democrats should do. And to be clear, I don't think age just became an issue after the debate. It's been a liability for both of these candidates for a very long time, both being Trump and Biden. And I think that Nikki Haley actually put it best of all people. Most Americans, do not want a rematch between Biden and Trump. No. The first party to retire its 80-year-old candidate is going to be the party that wins this election. Yeah, and I think a lot of people felt that way. So listen, Republicans are currently flailing and collectively shitting themselves. And you love to see it, especially considering how arrogant they were getting. But listen, I fully expect them to unify around one or two main attacks on Kamala and really try to exploit some weakness that they find with voters. So, you know, Democrats should never make the mistake of getting overly confident themselves. But at least for now, I've got to admit, it is really nice to watch them so fearful and worried because usually, you know, it feels like they, they always have the upper hand when it comes to messaging and attacks. But right now, they are fucking scrambling and I love watching them cower in fear. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. Tree. <laughs> tree. not like us. Tree. <laughs> you think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs>